so go between very clear literal instructions and I execute them. <sighs> yes. But, but how? How exactly? Because that means nothing. How does rock and plastic understand my words? That's not nice. Well, I guess if you're not talking, I'll just have to find them myself. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Zeros and ones. Each slide gets translated into zeros and ones, so I can understand them. But what is it concretely? How are zeros and ones doing things? No more abstractions. I suggest you be clear. Man, it's all man gates. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Thank you very much. So now that I've practically sacrificed myself during the AI uprising for your entertainment, let's get to the fruit of my research, shall we? If you're anything like me, you probably went insane thinking about how humans made computers to begin with. A wise person put it best when they said that computers are rocks we tricked into thinking. But that's still wild to me. How did we look at rocks and say, mmm, thinking machine? No, like if you were to start from zero, how would you begin? Where would you begin? What would you start with? And I finally started getting my answer when I took a computer architecture class. So I built a computer. Kind of. I can now confidently say that if I ever travel back in time, I can either advance humanity by a couple of centuries or speedrun getting burned at the stake. How to trick rocks into thinking? Electricity is fast, so if you can get it to do something, then it will do that thing very fast. Then if you attach meaning to that thing, then it will do a meaningful thing very fast. So very smart people attached meaning to electricity. They said that the absence of electricity, that's a zero, but if there's electricity, that's a one. Check out my information theory video for more. And you, as a very smart person, might be thinking, hmm, why not attach zero to no electricity, one to little electricity, and two to much electricity? Fair, but that is very, very prone to error. First, what do you consider the difference between little electricity and much electricity? And you can only imagine the errors that could create. It's just, eh. So all in all, okay, so no electricity, zero, electricity, one. So now we have the infamous zeros and ones, which we gave a very cute name, which is bits. Okay. now. We need to make them do stuff. And to make them do stuff, we need to control their flow. How do you control flow? Well, you have two options, either yes flow or no flow. This is where you meet the transistor. You probably heard about the transistor. It's almost everywhere. Think of a transistor as a tiny switch. But this switch, you don't turn it on by clicking on it with your fingers. You click on it using guessed it, electricity. An analogy I really love to explain the two different types of transistors is this. Imagine a transistor as two chunks of a certain special material surrounding a wire. If the chunks expand, they will block the wire and therefore electricity won't pass through it anymore. And if they tense and shrink, they will open up and allow electricity to flow through the wire again. 
So it's like a door, it closes or opens it, passing or blocking. Now, this material, you have two types. You have one that is by default relaxed and expanded, and if you give it electricity, it will tense up and shrink. And the other one, it's tensed up and shrunk by default, and if you give it electricity, it will relax and expand. TLDR, if the chunks expand, they block the path, and if the chunks shrink, they open up the path and they're no longer blocking it. Now using this material, you have two types of transistors, which we gave names. Don't let the names scare you. It's NMOS and PMOS. Now for this video, you don't need to know what that means. Just keep it there for now. So let's start by NMOS. The NMOS transistor is by default relaxed and expanded, hence blocking the wire. And when you give it electricity, it tenses up, shrinks, opening up and the current can pass through the wire again. So to resume NMOS, you give it one, opens up, current passes through the wire, you don't give it one, it's closed and current does not pass through the wire. Now PMOS, and you guessed it, it's the opposite, using the other kind of material. PMOS is by default shrunk and tense, so current can pass through the wire and it's not blocking. And when you give it electricity, it will relax, expand, blocking the passage and a current can no longer flow through. NMOS, it has an N, no passage by default. If you give it electricity, it allows you to pass. PMOS is the opposite. By default, it allows you to pass, but once it's given electricity, it blocks, it doesn't allow you to pass. Cool, now we can control the flow of electricity. You control the flow of a certain electricity using another electricity. Because your hands here, you cannot use them. You only configure or make changes using electricity. You're a wizard, Harry. What next? Well, the first and simplest thing that you might want to do is, I don't know, flip a zero to a one or flip a one into a zero. Basically, a Nuno reverse card. This is where the not gate comes in. It's called a gate because it allows electricity through, or it doesn't. The not gate is the nah -uh of logic. You give it a one, it gives you a zero. You give it a zero, it gives you a one. It's one input, one output. It's just a little inverter. Here is the not gate implemented in all its glory. The input here is A. It is the bit we want to flip. A bar is the output. Hopefully, the opposite of A. VDD is 5 volts or the existence of electricity, also known as 1. GND is 0 volts or the absence of electricity, also known as 0. Let's start with case 1. A is 1. Therefore, there is electricity at A. And what do we expect of the NOT gate? We expect that the outcome will be 0. That electricity goes to both transistors, one is PMOS, one is NMOS. Now remember, NMOS, no passage by default. You need to give it electricity for it to allow you passage. PMOS is the opposite. By default, you can pass through. Give it electricity, it becomes blocking. Since A is a 1, it makes the NMOS allow passage, but it makes the PMOS block passage. So you have a direct link between the output and GND, or said otherwise, zero. Meaning that the outcome is indeed zero. Case two, A is zero. So now we expect the outcome to be one. Let's check it out. Since A is zero, it's the absence of electricity, so it does not affect the transistors. By default, remember, NMOS, no passage, so the path is blocked. PMOS, however, is by default, it allows passage. So you have a direct link between the output and VDD, meaning that the outcome is one. Notice how for each case, there was never a direct link between VDD and zero. You do not want that because if there's a direct link between both of them, then what is that? Is that a zero? Is that a one? Is it a mix between the two? Disaster. And you pretty much short circuit the entire thing. That's code for you messed up. So that's the not gate, and it's called a logic gate, because it has a certain logic to it. And to make life simpler, we gave it this symbol. The line on the left is through which electricity flows, the line on the right is the output. And we also use something called a truth table, which is the one you can see right now, which tells you what outcomes you will get 
four specific incomes using this specific logic gate. So this one tells you that if you give it zero, the gate will give you one, and if you give it one, the gate will give you zero. So now we have the power to flip bits. Next is the power to make two of them interact. There are plenty of ways you can do this. For example, the AND logic gate, with this symbol and this truth table. You probably noticed that this one is unlike the NOT gate because it has two inputs and one output. And as you probably guessed by the truth table, this logic gate only gives you one if both inputs are one. If one of them is zero, it will give you zero. It needs both. It, it has high standards. Another famous one is the OR gate with this truth table and this symbol. Basically, it has less standards. It gives you one if at least one of the inputs is one. A single one, it's all good. It doesn't need two. But there is one that is in particular very, very important. Drum roll, please. It's you guys that NAND. Here is its truth table. I'm not giving you the symbol. As the name suggests, it's a mix between NOT and AND. NAND pretty much says NOT AND. It's as if you pass the output of the AND gate into a NOT gate to flip it. It has the same symbol as the AND gate with a little circle at the end on the right. Those are added at the end of gate symbols to signify that we inverted the output. And now, let us build its implementation using transistors. And side note, building the implementation of a logic gate using transistors, those two types of transistors, NMOS and PMOS, is called CMOS. We won't be going into detail about that, one, because it's irrelevant to the video, and two, because I simply don't know. Okay, back to it. Let's build the implementation using transistors. First off, we have the VDD and GND, or the sources of one and zero. And we also have the output. You can see in the truth table that the output is zero only if A and B are both one. So the output should be linked to G and D, i.e. linked to zero, only if A and B are both ones. For this, we will use the transistors that by default block passage and only allow passage when given electricity or when given a one. Okay, the keyword was blocking by default and mass, no passage. That's just a way I remember it. Look what happens if we put them one after the other like this, with A and B as inputs respectively. This order is called putting them in series. Let us say that only A is one and B is zero. The A transistor receives that one and now allows passage, but the B one is still blocking and the current does not pass through. It is the same vice versa if B was one and A was zero. If both A and B are ones, then both gates will allow passage and the current will flow through, hence the output will be connected with G and D. Okay, so that's the zero side dealt with. We also see that the output is one if at least one of A and B is a zero. So we need a transistor that opens up with a zero, hence is open by default, but which closes up when given a one. You guessed it, the PMOS transistor. But do we put them one after the other this time as well? Well, let's see. Let's take the first case. Both A and B are zeros, so both transistors remain passing and allow current through. The connection is made between the output and VDD, or the one, so the output is one. And all is good. Let's try the second case, however. A is zero, so the first transistor allows current through. However, B is one, which makes the next PMOS transistor block the current. No connection between VDD and the output, therefore the output is not one. The issue here is that we put them one after the other, which means we require both transistors to be passing, i.e. both A and B to be zero for the connection to be made. But we said that we didn't need both A and B to be zero, 
only one being zero suffices. So we put them in this order instead. It is called connecting them in parallel. Case one. Both A and B are zero, and hence both PMOS transistors remain passing, allowing current to flow through. A connection between the output and VDD established, so the output is one, all good. Case two, A is zero and B is one. The A transistor receives zero and hence remains passing. However, the other receives one, so becomes blocking. And that's not a problem since we still obtain a connection between the output and VDD, so all is good. Case 3. It is the same as case 2, except flipped. Case 4. Both A and B are 1. Both top transistors become blocking, and the only connection output has is G and D. All good, this is a circuit designed for the NAND gate. There is no case where there is a direct connection between VDD and GND, which is the big no-no. Let's get to the reason why NAND is so, so important. The NAND gate has what we call functional completeness. This means that any other gate can be expressed by using only NAND gates. Literally everything in a computer is just a NAND gate with extra steps. There's this course on Coursera I took a while back called NAND to Tetris, where you build a computer starting from NAND gates. I'll put a link in the description with my GitHub repo where there's all of my work on the project. How would we create a NOT gate using NAND gates? Already it seems problematic because NOT has only one input whereas NAND has two. Well, you just feed that single input we shall call A here to both entries of the NAND gate. If A is zero, then both inputs of the NAND are zero, and therefore the output is one. If A is one, then both inputs of the NAND are one, and therefore the output is zero, which is the NOT gate. Cool. Now already with NAND and NOT, you can make AND. NAND is not AND. So not NAND is not not AND. Flip twice and you go back to the original state. The two nots cancel out and you're left with the AND. Here is a list of the main logic gates along with their tables. NAND could be used to create each one. I won't be doing that in this video because it's already long as it is. So let me know if you want a video where I go over logic and CMOS in more detail. Thanks for watching. I hope this was useful and have a lovely day.